What's up guys, Alan Brock here, and I apologize for the lack of videos lately. As it turns out, taking care of twins, not as easy as it sounds, but uh, even though I haven't had a lot of spare time, one thing I was able to do this past week is book my trip to Zion. Uh, my super awesome wife has, I don't want to say let me go on the trip, but uh, she let me go on the trip this year. And it's my third year, third fall, going to Zion National Park. And I'm even more excited this year than I was my first year going. And I was pretty excited my first year. But I started thinking, even though this is my third straight year there, I'm pretty familiar with it, I try to go back and think about what it was like for my first year there. And I live in Tennessee. I haven't spent any time out west, really, before uh, I started going to Zion had really no idea what I was getting into. And I remember that first year being so unfamiliar with it. I mean, with Zion, I thought that the Narrows and Subway were on the same river. Uh, they're not, by the way, not even close. And so I started thinking back to some of the things I did to familiarize myself with Zion so that I could get the most out of my trip there. And I thought I would share some of those tips with you um, if you guys are planning to go photograph a national park uh, that you haven't been to or you're planning to take that photography trip uh, that you've always wanted to take, I highly recommend it, by the way. It's one of the most worthwhile things I've ever done. But I wanted to share some of the things that, I, uh, that have helped me get familiar with a place before I ever visit it so that I could get the most out of my trip. So here are six tips to photograph national parks or really any place you've never been to before. Now the first tip is probably uh, the most time consuming, uh, but also one of the most worthwhile, and that is research. Do lots and lots of research. To begin your research, there's so many tools out there, but to begin your research, one thing I recommend doing is looking at a map, uh, kind of familiarizing yourself with the overall uh, outlay of the park. I love these National Geographic maps. They're good um, to do research. They're good to take with you on the trail. They're waterproof, um, tearproof. You can get these on Amazon, pick them up dirt cheap on eBay. Uh, here's one for the Smokies, uh, for Zion here. But I think it is very important to begin with to have an overall picture of the park so you'll know where trails are. You can get a good idea of driving distance between the trails, uh, between areas you want to shoot, and just to have a good overall picture so that as you start to plan your trip, you'll know how to piece these areas together. So once you've kind of looked into these maps and have uh, a good feel for the overlay of the park, start to narrow it down. Start to research areas you want to photograph. and. There are tons of books out there. Go to Amazon, search the area you're going to be photographing. You're going to get lots of, uh, lots of books out there. This one, Photographing the Southwest, is what I used for uh, Zion and Bryce the first year I went. Um, you're going to get a lot of kind of inside information. You're going to get um, the, some of these books. This one's particularly well written. They'll give you suggested focal lengths, um, hiking time, hiking difficulties. It's going to be mostly iconic images, which is okay. I'll get to that in just a second. But uh, really good information. In uh, if you're going to photograph Southern Utah, I highly rec recommend this. But there are books for everywhere: Yosemite, the Tetons. Uh, Yellowstone. So go to Amazon and just type in photographing whatever park you're going to get to. Odds are you're going to find a lot of resources there. But don't just limit it to photography books. I really like just trail guides. These Falcon guides, Hiking, Zion, and Bryce. I've got the same one for uh, the Smokies. Uh, it's just fun to get out and explore and hike, not just for photography, but just to see the park you're visiting. But I've uh, kind of mined a lot of little tidbits from just these hiking books. So don't just limit uh, your reading to photography books. Uh, check out hiking guides as well. And then the final bit of, uh, I guess, literature book-wise is um, 
that I recommend is Zion has uh, a place called Zion Adventure Company, and they've got all these little uh, brochures about the Narrows, uh, overall hiking Zion. I've got a few in here from Bryce, a few from the Smokies. Uh, just any information you can get your hands on, soak it up. Obviously, uh, internet is a huge resource. Type in photographing Zion, and you're going to get tons of uh, tons of tips, tons of tricks. Uh, for Zion, there's a website out there called Citrus Milo. I'll put a link to it right here. Uh, it's just chock full of photography information, hiking information. Uh, really, really a good resource. And there's resources like that for all the national parks. YouTube, also a good source. Um, again, don't limit it to photographing. I'll go back to Zion because it's what I'm now most familiar with. But the only photographer I follow on YouTube uh, that does these photography trips is Ben. Uh, most of the guys I follow that do work in Zion are actually just these uh, hiking channels or overnight backpacking channels. Just, uh, I like to follow their adventures, kind of see what a hike looks like, and that gives me a lot of information before I go out there, and I can kind of know what to expect. So, tip number one, do lots of research. It's going to be a little bit time consuming, but definitely well worth it. So, tip number two, once you've got uh, your research in mind, start to make a shot list for the days that you're going to be there. Now, some people don't want... Uh, such a regimented trip and I completely understand that but you're gonna get there and odds are if it's your first time there you're gonna be so overwhelmed there's gonna be so much new to see that you're just gonna to want to photograph everything and you will kinda of start to lose uh, lose focus a bit so I recommend writing down a shot list writing down images you absolutely want to get and that'll kinda of help structure your trip a little bit you can obviously deviate from that but I think it really helps to have a list of goals that you want to achieve. Tip number three uh, is a little bit of a gear, uh, gear tip, and that is take tons of lenses. My first year design, I took, uh, was shooting mainly digital. I took a 16 to 35, a 50, and then I also took a 100 macro, uh, thinking I wanted to do some uh, close-up shots. But I'm actually glad I took that macro because there was one shot as I was exploring a little bit on the Kolob Terrace. I uh, noticed a storm coming in and there was light, uh, one little beam of light uh, hitting the West Temple. And I was so far away that I needed the longest lens possible. So I grabbed that 100 macro even though you don't think of long, long uh, focal lengths being landscape lenses. I'm really glad I had it because that turned out to be one of my favorite, uh, favorite shots from the trip. So you're going to be unfamiliar with an area. You're gonna, not going to know how many uh, or kind of the spatial relationship. So it's going to help to have all manner of lenses. Your pack is going to be a little bit heavier, but it's kind of always my philosophy, better to carry too much and make sure that you get a shot as opposed to not carrying enough lenses and wishing you had one. So. For your first trip out there, I highly recommend taking every single lens you think is going to be necessary cover that wide range of focal lengths. Um, tip number four, this kind of goes back into planning your overall trip, but length of your trip, I recommend at least a week. That's going to let you uh, give some days in case weather doesn't cooperate, you'll have plenty of other times to shoot. It's also going to give you some time to just explore the park, to not feel like you have to be shooting every single second, just to kind of take a laid back approach and really uh, see what the park's all about. Uh, and I think that exploration is really important so that you can start to maybe plan future trips there. Also, you're not going to have so much pressure on yourself to feel like you have to be photographing every single second. You're going to be able to, again, take a laid back approach and really uh, have plenty of time to get the shots you want without feeling stressed. Tip number five. Now this one may, uh, may not make everyone happy, but I think it's worth it. Tip number five is photograph the icons. And has everybody else in the world photographed these? Yes. Are you going to be getting anything new? No. 
but these places are iconic for a reason and that's because they are gorgeous. They're also pretty easily accessible. The reason I recommend photographing them is because I think it's worth it. I think there's a lot to be said to come back with images that are really good. And psychologi psychologically, I struggle with hard words, um, again, psychologically, got it right that time, you're going to be happy that you invested this time in a trip, invested this money to get out there. It's really going to do, uh, do a lot of good to make sure you come back with some good images. And the icons are the absolute best way to do that. Um, at Zion, I really don't have any interest in photographing the bridge shot, but I photographed the Towers of the Virgin at sunrise. That's equally as iconic. Um, if I ever go to Death Valley, I've just never been uh, attracted to Zabriskie Point, but I'll definitely photograph the, risk, uh, the racetrack. That's equally as iconic. I've photographed uh, the Molten Barn. I've driven up to Clingman's Dome at sunrise in the Smokies. and. Uh, stood right beside my car and photographed sunrise there. That's iconic. The first thing I do when I go to Yosemite, I'm going to photograph uh, Tunnel View. I'm going to do it in black and white just like Ansel Adams did. So these, these locations are gorgeous um, and I definitely think it's worth it to photograph the icons. Everybody's done it and no one's going to think less of you. So make sure you get those good images from your iconic locations. So this brings me to tip number six, my last tip, and it's the most important. Once you've done your research, once you've made your first trip out there, you've explored, you've taken your photographs of the icons, go back. Go back in another year, go back in a different season, see how it's changed. You've explored, you've started to get a feel for the park go back, take your own shots now. I remember uh, last year, my second year there, as I was planning the trip, I had a feel for the park and I started to uh, take some, or envision some shots that I hadn't ever seen before. And it's so worth it. You're gonna just get a better feel for the place. You're gonna get familiar familiarity. I'm having trouble talking today. You're gonna know what the place looks like. Let's go with that. Um, and you're going to start to be able to plan out your own shots to go away from the shots that you saw from the first time. And that's really going to make your experience that much more special. I highly recommend going back. This is my third year to Zion. Um, definitely not going to be my last either. I'll go back year after year because I want to become as familiar as I can with the place. I want to see it in different weather conditions. Um, also, it's just really cool to go back to, uh, to see people doing the same thing. Uh, it's going to be kind of a mini reunion this, this year with people I hadn't seen for a couple years, people I hadn't seen since last year. So it's a lot of fun to go back and revisit a place uh, to see familiar, familiar faces. It's just like visiting an old friend. So I hope this helps. I highly, highly recommend taking photography trips. Um, it's again one of the most worthwhile things you can do to really spend at least a week in a place, uh, someplace new to branch out. Um, it's really, really something that you'll remember for the rest of your life. So hope this helps. If you have any questions about photographing the Smokies or Zion, I can give you some specifics. But uh, if the twins cooperate, I'll see you guys sometime soon. Thanks for watching.